What's going on guys, it's Caleb and today we have a Honda S2000 in the shop for a detail, man, this is very exciting. Now if you've watched the channel previously, you know that I'm really into Euro cars, I'm not a really big JDM car guy. Of course there are the few JDM legends and gems like Skylines, S chassis, all that stuff that, I, that everyone pretty much loves, but it all dies off for me until we reach the S2000. These cars are just amazing and I love the way they look and some of the trim levels you can get as well with the different wings, front bumpers, and just even track cars. Like if you guys watch Grid Life, just go on YouTube and type in Grid Life, you're going to see a lot of S2000s with massive wings racing and that's just the coolest part of an S2000. So anyways, I could talk about cars all day, it is a hefty passion of mine, but we're doing car details detailing in this video. So if you want to sit back, relax, get you a drink, a snack, we're doing a full-on paint correction of the thing and coating, but we got to start somewhere and that somewhere would be the wheels. We're going to be using PNS Brake Buster and some Adam's Iron Remover to get them all nice and cleaned up, so I hope you guys enjoy.
So the hard part about this is that it just keeps raining very lightly and it's like it's not light enough for me to come out with my camera and keep going and get work done and record but you know it's also not heavy enough for me not to do the job but I don't want to not do the job and like not record it and oh it's a predicament man I just wish this rain would stop because here in a minute I'm just gonna risk the $3,000 camera almost over. been really trying hard to get this thing washed on camera and it's just not gonna happen I mean the rain it shows on the radar that it's a very small patch but we live in Florida so it just continues to build and build and build and build
now it's time for one of the most important steps prior to doing any kind of polishing, and that's going to be the mechanical decontamination. Sounds like a fancy word, but honestly, it's just me using a clay bar. As for lubricant with the clay bar, all I'm using is water and like a little drip of optimum no rinse in there, just for that little extra added bit of lubrication. Most of the time I use just water, but recently I've been really liking a little bit of o and in there. It really makes it a lot better. After cleaning off the car and getting it dry, the one thing I think is most important is blowing all of the water out of the crevices because you definitely don't want to start polishing and then some drip out, that's just really annoying. And I do know for some people, at least it was for me when I was getting started detailing, that air was something very hard to get a hold of. And so just a tip for anyone who's really just now starting to get into this and they don't want to spend the massive amount of money on an air compressor, just go get some canned duster like you would use for a keyboard or something. It's in the electronics section, seriously. It's not that expensive, but it really helps out a lot. So, very difficult paint inspection because it is a metallic silver and man, you really have to manipulate the light to be able to get a good visual. So, overall, the car is not really in bad shape at all. You can definitely see some spots that have been resprayed. You can see the blend spots like in the back passenger. And then over here on the passenger front bumper, really weird, heavy area of overspray, crazy orange peel type of ordeal. Hopefully we can dig pretty deep for that. I might pull out the Stoner's Car Care um, compound for that so that way I can really bite into it deep. As for the rest of the paint, it is pretty much what you would expect swirls and scratches to be like on a Japanese car with soft paint with 40,000 miles. It's really, really easy to be dealt with. We're gonna be using Koch Chemi's Fine Cut, which is their lighter compound, which is wonderful for paint like this. And then following up with either Perfect Finish or maybe even the micro cut. I'm not really too sure yet. We're gonna figure that out as we go along. Other than that, let's go ahead and get this thing taped up and I might get out my one inch polisher and start doing some spots just to see how nice it works out. This is going to correct awesomely. It's gonna be great. Koch Kemi Spine Cut is gonna do a fantastic job on this. I don't even know if I'm gonna use a microfiber pad as usual because that's gonna cut pretty deep. I'm not really too sure. I'm gonna go ahead and do around the door handle and see how that corrects because you can very easily see the blemishes in the light. Yup, 
too. That's great. That is some awesome work right there. So the headlight <laughs> is a much harder product than the paint, so it's not correcting nearly as easy. And my light, you hear that? That was thunder. So I'm probably gonna save the headlights and the taillights for the end of the correcting segment, just because I'm gonna have to use stoners on this, because I need something that's gonna bite pretty hard. And uh, by then I should have my microfiber one inch pads, which would be an absolute blessing to just blast these things. <laughs> pretty cut up it's really 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 difficult to see but uh, I think the plan of attack is to do a half and half just to show you guys the difference You know, right off the bat, let me let me let me let me say something. I can't really show you the blemishes that are left over because this paint sucks to show anything with. So what we're gonna do is, uh, you guys just take my word for it. <laughs> There's a couple of spots in the paint that definitely need to be worked with. Dare I say that the hood's been re-sprayed because it's a much harder paint than the rest of the car. Is what I'm coming to find out.
I'm gonna try to stick with majorly the three inch and the five inch pad at the very least for the next three or four hours because my new one inch microfiber pads come in here in that time period. So uh, that's a good thing because I don't have any more one inch pads. The last one from yesterday got ripped off. So pretty much from this point on, dare I say the microphone port on my Sony a7 III is starting to go out because all of the microphone footage, I don't know if you saw the last video, but there was a couple like parts where the microphone didn't sound good or didn't work and that's exactly what's going on here. It's a very common problem with the a7 III, beautiful camera, just that microphone jack is pretty rough. So I might have to get it sent out to get fixed or go to somewhere local, I don't know. So from now on, I'm just gonna blip in here every now and then. And by the way, real quick, <laughs> the cutting portion in this car w went so good, dude. <laughs> like I loved cutting this car up with some compound. It was so much fun. It's very rare that a car like this comes through the shop and it corrects this easy and goes this smoothly. It was actually crazy because if you guys want to know what I did, there was no editing tricks. This was legitimately just one pass with the polisher and then going back at the very end of the cutting process and chasing a couple here and there. Starting the polishing day, I was insanely excited for this day because of how just smoothly the cutting day went. Like it would, yeah, I, I was, I could not express to you how excited I was for this moment. Just because with the Kosh Kemi fine cut, it being a lighter compound, it already looked so good. So the only thing that we could get from this point is better. It can only get better from here on out. More glossy, more liquidy looking, more wet. And that's exactly what happened. I went ahead and used a Rupes yellow pad with some Sonax Perfect Finish as per usual and it just went beautifully. Just stay, just watch, just watch. <laughs> Thank you. 
polishing going just about as smoothly as it possibly can go. It's time to do some little buttoning up here and there with a small one inch pad, the little rubber trim piece you see right here by the windshield, just little things like that we need to button up before we wipe it down with an IPA and move into the coating. Before I do any wiping of the panels with an isopropyl alcohol mixture, I like to go ahead and take a toothpick and a cocktail stick, spray a towel with the IPA, and go through all the crevices. If you're familiar with Jim from White Details, he has perfectly coined this as toothpickery, and there really is no better way to put it. It is a very important step, at least in my book, to make sure that this is done prior to coating because you don't want all of that polishing residue left in the crevices that the owner might find later on. As for the coating, we're going to be using Crystal Serum Light plus XOV4 from G-Technic. If you guys watched videos previously of mine, I always like to use this and or Drexler's ceramic coating system. It kind of just gauges upon the budget of the job. As for this case, we were going all out as much as possible with this paint, so we went ahead and used the Crystal Serum Light. They're both fantastic coatings, just sometimes I prefer to use the G-Technic, and especially with a car like this with much softer paint, I most certainly wanted to use G-Technic.
the last few things to wrap this baby up is to go ahead and get the glass cleaned with some invisible glass and then put some stoner ceramic glass coating on the windshield and all the glass itself. If you're interested in any stoner's products, they are down in the description below. Awesome, awesome company. They are a sponsor of the channel. Past that, we have to get the exhaust tips nice and polished up by hand and coated as well with some Q2 rim. And then we're going to be coating the interior a little bit. We'll get to that whenever that comes. Needless to say, the interior was in great condition, but that doesn't stop me from trying to get it even cleaner and protecting it from here on. The main focus here was the leather. We went ahead and used some Stoner's Leather Cleaner, and you can see a before and after kind of half and half thing going on here in just a minute. And once that was clean and we went ahead and wiped it all down, we applied some Leather Guard from G Technic. It's a nano coating to give it some UV protection, protection from dye transfer, fading, that sort of stuff. Before I apply that though, make sure you wipe it down with a wet microfiber before any application is applied of this coating, just so that way it's a clean surface and there's no oils or anything other than that i think we are done what an awesome car man i was so excited to do this thing and it went so smoothly that is just an, a beautiful thing in this world of detailing <laughs> anyways if you guys enjoyed the video please show me by leaving a like and if you like car content or car detailing content go ahead and press subscribe and ring that bell to know every single time i upload here soon i'm thinking about bringing back the shop vlogs either that or doing something in the members only section here soon starting all that up i don't know i'm just playing around gonna figure something out either way i hope you guys have a good rest of your week and merry christmas by the way merry christmas god we're already at christmas isn't that nuts yeah crazy <laughs> see you guys later